From the moment he was accused of killing a U.S. soldier in Afghanistan, Omar Khadr has sparked emotionally charged debate. Was he a child soldier used by his family or was he a terrorist? Ottawa's decision to apologize and pay him money will probably cement existing opinions. But there is a crucial fact at play as well. This isn't just a political battle. It's a legal one. And this country's highest court says Cotter is a Canadian citizen whose rights were violated by his own government. Catherine Cullen starts our coverage. Nice day. It is a really nice day. I thought it was going to be warmer. He looks really pretty there. relaxed, but Omar Cotter might just be the most divisive figure in Canada right now. Let me ask you about the apology. What, why does that matter to you? Uh, I think it, uh, it restores a little bit my uh, reputation here in Canada. The government is trying to minimize the damage to its reputation with this deal, taking great pains to distance itself from Cotter, the young boy building roadside bombs in Afghanistan, like the ones that killed Canadian soldiers. This deal, government ministers say, is the result of what happened after at Guantanamo Bay, including his interrogation by Canadian officials. The Supreme Court of Canada has said clearly and unequivocally that that behaviour on the part of those Canadian officials was wrong. And you may want to dismiss the rule of law and the Constitution, but if you do that, you are fundamentally undermining the integrity of the country. And perhaps an acknowledgement of how sensitive this all is, no one actually said the word sorry. Why is that? The, um, uh, the apology uh, was issued in, uh, in written form uh, and it was uh, prepared uh, in accordance with the, uh, with the agreement between the parties. Even that written apology itself only says Canadian officials may have played a role in relation to his ordeal abroad. The terms of Cotter's deal also mean the government isn't publicly talking about the amount he received, though CBC News has confirmed it's $10.5 million. But no attempt to downplay will temper the outrage some feel over this deal. It's not just wrong, it's disgusting. This additional payment of taxpayers' dollars is a slap in the face to the men and women in uniform, to all those who have lost loved ones on the battlefield. Then there's the widow of the soldier killed. She and another soldier injured in the attack successfully sued Cotter in the U.S. and won damages of more than $130 million. They've seen none of it. If Omar Cotter is truly sorry for what he has done, that money would be given directly to the family of Sergeant Spear. Now, the lawyer for the Spear family did tell some media outlets that they want the money that's been given to Omar Cotter, but some legal experts say that that will be an uphill battle. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Ottawa. Stephen Harper issued a statement tonight. The former prime minister characterized the current government's decision as a secret deal with Omar Khadr and says it is simply wrong. The Khadr story has been 15 years in the making. Here's a look back at how it unfolded. In a 2002 firefight, U.S. Army medic Christopher Spear was struck by a hand grenade and killed. 15-year-old Omar Khadr was accused of his murder and detained. RCMP and CSIS investigators interviewed Cotter and shared the results with U.S. officials. Cotter says he was threatened with rape and violence and subjected to sleep deprivation. In 2010, the Supreme Court of Canada found Cotter's charter rights had been breached. Later that year, he pleaded guilty and received an eight-year sentence with a promise that some would be served in Canada. In 2012, Cotter is repatriated. Two years later, the federal court allowed him to sue Canada for conspiring with the U.S. In 2015, Cotter is granted bail while he appeals. I spoke with Omar Cotter before the settlement was announced. Here now, our full conversation. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah? I'm doing okay. It's a bit crazy, but I'm doing okay. What part's crazy? Uh, this, this whole uh, media thing going on. Uh, the leak of uh, uh, some information regarding uh, an apology. Let, let me ask you about the apology. What, why does that matter to you? Uh, I think it, uh, it restores a little bit my uh, reputation here in Canada. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for me. Like I, I never uh, was angry or upset about what happened, but it's, it's been hard, you know, finding jobs or going to school and stuff with 
uh, my past reputation. So this is gonna help me move forward a bit easier. Do you think it will make people forget though, what you did? No, not forget, um, but maybe uh, it would help people uh, think that maybe there's more uh, to what happened and maybe look more into it and understand more about what happened. You say it's it's been it's been hard because of your reputation. Where, can you give me an example, like what the kind of thing that's happened or couple the way of times, people view you? Well, a couple of times I uh, apply for a job and people will say, oh yes, yes, and then they come back and they don't want to do it for no good reason. Sometimes they say, you know, uh, people are not comfortable with uh, your past, and I understand uh, people's livelihoods. Uh, but I would uh, like to be able to move forward without having that. Uh, what do you say to them? Because I remember when you did your press conference, um, you know, a, a couple of years back now, right? And you said, I hope people give me a chance. So what do you say to the people who are still, they still don't, they still don't, they still don't believe you or they still don't want to give you a chance? They do give me a chance. Like, I haven't had any bad experience with anybody, uh, but I understand like certain businesses, they have a reputation to hold. And uh, I can't expect everybody to offer me everything if it's going to endanger them. So it's understandable, but I think it would make it easier for them with this apology to like, hire me or consider hiring me. Have you ever thought about changing your name? No, it's, I have the same face. It doesn't really matter. What about the reports of a large amount of money? Uh, I can't talk about that. Uh, I can't say uh, anything about that um, one way or the other. Uh, it's, it's a part of the agreement that I don't talk about these things. What do you say to people who say you don't deserve the money? I said we don't know anything about the money. Um, and I can't say if there is or there isn't. Um, like, for me, this is, this is not a time for celebration. This is a time for reconciliation, remembrance, healing. Um, and I, I really hope that The talk about of settlement or the apology does not cause people pain, and if it does, you know, you know I'm really sorry for for that pain. I don't. Are you talking about the Spears family, who already yes. says, who's already out there publicly saying you don't deserve money, or they should, they should have the money if there is money. I said I'm I'm really sorry for their pain. This is not uh, my intention. Um, so this is a time for you know reconciliation and hopefully not forgetting, but you know, moving on and healing. Do you, do you have an understanding of how divisive you are in Canada? Of how people have, you know, they, there are some people who think you're a child soldier, there are some people who think you're a terrorist. Do you, do you get that? I do, I do. People, you know, we live in Canada, it's a free country, people are entitled, you know, to make their own opinions, um, to voice their own opinions. But what do you say to them about that? Either of those qualifications? I said, I'm not there to change people's opinions. Uh, I am who I am. All I ask is for them uh, to form an informed, uh, to make an informed opinion about me. Uh, it's easy to just believe what's said about me, but you know, take the time, get to know me personally. And then whatever you choose, whatever opinion you want to make of me, you know, I will respect that. Do you have contact with your family? A little bit, yes, I do. And what's that contact like? Because I would imagine you're pretty different, are you now? Uh, I am. Uh, I am very different. It's 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 tough sometimes, but uh, it's families, you know. But you feel it's important to to remain in contact to keep them. Of course, in your life. Yeah. you know they say you choose your friends, you don't choose your family, and you know sometimes uh, maybe it's my responsibility to have good influence on them uh, because everybody's worried that they're going to have a bad influence on me, but. Uh, Maybe that's my contribution is you know, to have that positive influence on me. Do you, when you think about the teenager you were mm -hmm. when all this happened, and I know you have, um, I know your, your memories aren't great from that period. What, mm -hmm. Does it feel like a different person? Do you remember being that person, doing those things? I do. Uh, the thing is when you're young, you don't think about the morality of what you're doing or wh why you're doing it. Uh, when you grow up in an environment 
where these things are normal, you just do them. You don't, as I said, you don't think about the morality, you don't think about the rights and the wrongs. You just do whatever everybody else around you is doing. So I am a different person, uh, but I think being a, uh, the young person that I was, I could have easily been influenced with any uh, surrounding I was in. Uh, so it's just unfortunate that I was in this particular And you're not angry about that part? That you were put in that position? Being angry is not going to change anything. No, but uh, still. Years passed, like as I said, if anger could bring back lost years and experiences, maybe, but it doesn't bring back anything. Right now, I'm just trying to focus on the future and trying to focus on things that uh, I can have influence and change. But do you feel you deserve an apology and or money? I don't think it's a matter of deserving. Uh, sometimes it's, it's the thing that we can do to better the chances for a lot of people to heal and to be able to move forward. Who, who are you now? What kind of guy are you? What do you like to do? Um, I'm a student. I'm hoping to go into nursing in September. Why nursing? Well, I always knew I wanted to do something in the medical field. Um, I started paramedicine. That didn't work very well. Uh, so I'm looking into paramedicine. I want to be able to interact with people, uh, to help people. To feel that, like, I don't, I don't want to feel that I'm a burden and I don't want to feel that uh, people have to help me or that I'm living on people's shoulders. I want to be able to say, you know, I can be somebody on my own. Uh, I can educate myself. I can, you know, find a job, provide something, be somebody, not because of my past, but because of what I choose right now. And what kind of things do you like to do? Uh, I'm an outdoorsy type of guy. I like biking. And I do, when I was in Edmonton, I did a lot of volunteering. Uh, that keeps me busy. And as I said, I, I like helping people as much as I can. I, the one thing I was wondering when I, well, the one thing I've been wondering for a long time, because I've been doing stories about you for a long time, do you sleep OK? Do you sleep? Do you have stuff still that's happening in there? Um, I do sleep. I do get nightmares. Um, I think the, the hardest part right now is just being overwhelmed. And uh, like being in prison, I've taught myself not to feel and to kind of just suppress my feelings. And when there's too many things uh, that are hard or too emotional, I suppress it and I, that kind of causes me to lose, lose sleep or I'm always trying to distract myself from feeling. I, I won't keep you too much longer. What do you say to Canadians who, who just who don't believe that you're a good guy? Who just don't believe that you could change like this? Uh, first, they're entitled to have their opinion. Um, I have like no ill feelings for anybody who doesn't like me or doesn't uh, think well of me. I tell them it's uh, a thing. I would tell them it's it's easy to make a conclusion about somebody without knowing them. But you know, uh, Canada is is an intelligent country. People in Canada are intelligent people. Uh, don't we never took the easy way out in anything. We always took the right way out. So do the right thing. Take the time. Uh, build make an informed decision and then you know I respect your opinion in whatever okay. it is. I know you gotta go. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I appreciate your time very much. Thank you.